The arrangement of the Qur'an is one of many reasons why Muslims believe that it could only have come from God. In fact, modern research has discovered a remarkable structure in the Qur'an known as ring composition. To demonstrate this, let's analyze the second chapter of the Qur'an known as Al-Baqarah, the cow. This chapter consists of a total of 286 verses. The entire chapter can be divided into nine groups based on theme. The first group of verses talk about faith and unbelief. This mirrors the theme of the last group of verses. The second group covers God's creation and knowledge. This again mirrors the second to the last group's theme. The third group discusses the law given to the Israelites, which mirrors the giving of law to the Muslims in the seventh group. The fourth group relates to the test of Abraham, a mirror of the test of Muslims in the sixth group. The middle group, the fifth group, is the central theme of the entire chapter, the change in direction of the Muslim prayer. We have made you believers a middle nation, so that you may bear witness to the truth before others. We only made the direction the one you used to face in order to distinguish those who follow the messenger from those who turn on their heels. This turning point was the change in direction of the daily prayers from Jerusalem to Mecca, which represented a big test for the believers. We find the mention of this important turning point in exactly the middle of the chapter, the 143rd verse. Moreover, this verse even contains the word middle. Together these nine groups form a giant ring composition. As you can see, ring composition is structured as a sort of circle, with the central meaning placed at the center. You can think of it in terms of a mirror. So ring composition is the equivalent of putting a mirror in the middle. What is mentioned in the first half will be reflected in the second half. Things can be taken a step further. If we examine these nine groups, we find that they each contain sub-ring compositions. So what we have is rings within rings. For example, here is the eighth group with the theme of God's creation and knowledge. We can see that the beginning and the end both have the themes of giving and charity, and the central theme of God's power and knowledge is placed in the middle. Things can be taken further still. This sub-ring contains yet another ring within itself. This is the 255th verse known as Ayat al-Kursi, the verse of the throne. Just like the chapter which contains it, the verse of the throne can be divided into nine groups based on theme. The first and ninth parts each mention God's personal names. The second and eighth parts both state that God never tires. The third and seventh parts describe that God owns everything in the heavens and the earth. The fourth and sixth parts make it clear that God has total control over us and we are dependent on Him. Notice that the middle of this verse mentions before and after, which could be yet another allusion to the mirroring of ring composition. It's worth highlighting that not only does the verse of the throne contain its own ring composition, but it is also positioned as a sub-ring within two larger rings, a concentric ring composition. We can see that this chapter of the Qur'an is marvelously designed, being precisely and tightly arranged according to the principles of ring composition. This precision in arrangement is in fact astonishing when we consider the timing of the revelation of these verses. To appreciate this, let's consider the analogy of building construction. Imagine you had the task of building a house. Rather than waiting until you receive all of the materials and then drawing up a carefully thought out design plan, you instead decide to proceed without complete knowledge of the constituent parts constructing it piecemeal, adding to it bit by bit as and when you receive the individual materials. What are the chances that this approach will result in a well-constructed house? Unlike an organized approach where each part is placed in its best possible position according to a design plan, instead you have a situation where it seems each part is placed arbitrarily, depending on the order in which the parts were received. In such circumstances, you would most likely end up with a very poorly designed house, liable to collapse at any time. It is highly unlikely, perhaps even impossible, that this disorganized approach would end up with the same stunningly designed house as an organized approach. Yet this is exactly what we find with the Qur'an structure. 
The builder in our example is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The house that he began to build since its first verses were revealed to him is the Quran. The rooms and bricks in our construction example are its chapters and verses. He can never have a design plan in place for the Quran because the revelation of many of its verses depended on events that were out of his control, such as the social developments and challenges that he faced throughout his prophethood. For example, believers would come up to him and question him on a particular matter, or his enemies would challenge him. The responses in the form of revelation would then descend on him, addressing the specific situation that he was facing. How could Muhammad have devised such an intricate plan when he could not predict the events that would dictate the revelation of verses? Such an arrangement would have to be planned in advance, but this was not possible due to these events being out of his control. What this demonstrates is that the author was someone who could predict the future. Possessing knowledge of the unseen is a quality of God, not human beings. Some critics may point out that books prior to the Qur'an had this literary style and therefore we cannot use this as an evidence for the Qur'an's divine origin. However, comparing the Qur'an to other books is like comparing night and day for many reasons. Firstly, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not a poet nor did he have any literary reputation. In fact, like many people at the time, he could not read or write. Secondly, most people would assume that the Qur'an is arranged chronologically starting with the first revealed verse and ending with the final revealed verse. This is the order in which books are typically written, in a logical sequence starting with the beginning, then the middle, and finally the end. But the way the Qur'an was composed is unlike any other book. Al-Baqarah, the chapter of the Qur'an that we have covered, was not revealed starting with verse 1, followed by verse 2, then 3, and so on. Rather, its verses were revealed out of sequence, over a span of many years, and interspaced with the revelation of verses from other chapters. The Qur'an's unusual manner of revelation makes implementing ring composition much more difficult than conventional books. Thirdly, conventional books follow an editorial process by undergoing multiple stages of editing, which allows the author to gradually refine the text over time. However, the Qur'an did not undergo an editorial process. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would place the verses in their positions as soon as they were revealed to him. With each new verse, he would not go off and review what had been previously revealed to see where he can position them in order to maintain a ring structure. Rather, spontaneous revelation was immediately followed by the placement of the verse, its position fixed. When we look at the history of the Qur'an's compilation, there is not a single instance of a verse being moved around in order to make it fit a ring composition. Fourthly, achieving ring composition in conventional books is much more feasible as the author has complete control over the content, allowing them to plan their structure ahead of time. As we've already seen with the Qur'an, its content was circumstantial as it was tied to events that were out of the control of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and therefore he could not plan a structure ahead of time. Fifthly, the Qur'an was first revealed as an oral recitation, not in written format. With written books, you can easily plan a structure because you can quickly and conveniently refer back to what you have written previously. But with the recited text like the Qur'an, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would have had to rely on his memory in order to recall what was previously revealed. A much greater challenge. In light of all these difficult circumstances, wouldn't you expect the Qur'an's structure to be jumbled? What we find, against all odds however, is that the Qur'an contains a remarkably sophisticated structure. The circumstances of the Qur'an's revelation, together with its precision and harmony, represent a compelling argument for its divine origin. Your companion is neither astray nor being misled, nor does he say anything of his own desire. It is no less than inspiration sent down to him. He was taught by one mighty in power.